how many of us feel that dogs are our best friends? They give us loyalty and affection. While well, owners often believe their dogs are highly intelligent too. This has never been proven, but that might be about to change. A new doggy IQ test has been developed by scientists who say canine intelligence works the same way as human intelligence and could help us understand the link between intelligence and health in people. Now, I'm not sure if you could hear a bit of growling, but with me is Sophia with Diesel and also one of the researchers behind the experiment, Dr. Rosalind Arden. Not sure what Diesel's found offset there that he's interested he's in, but what was the point of this research? Why did you think we needed a doggy IQ test? We wanted to see if dogs are like people in that a dog that's good at one test or task would also have a tendency to be reasonably good at another task. And we know that with people that's true, but we haven't tested that with dogs before. Now Diesel's a French bulldog, of course, known to be pretty clever, but you use border collies, didn't you? And they're working dogs, so they're known to have quite high degrees of intelligence. That's right. So we weren't asking, is one breed of dog smarter than another breed of dog? We wanted to rule out any influences from breeds. So we just worked with one breed of dog and we chose Border Collies because they all came from a farming background and that meant that they didn't have massive differences in lifestyle that could have contributed to any cognitive differences. So for example, Diesel here is an obviously fantastically looked after pet, wonderful companion animal, been you know, marvellously looked after. Some animals might be not so, but with all our dogs, they all had a very similar environmental background and that made the science tighter. Sophia, can, can you believe this, that there is an IQ test that might now prove in the future how clever Diesel is? Uh, absolutely. I think for me, there's no question about it. I mean, as much as Diesel isn't always the best <laughs> behaved pooch, uh, I think that's actually a reflection almost of his intelligence. I think, I mean, despite the fact that sometimes he can be a little bit naughty and he might not want to stay still, uh, it, it almost does kind of show that he is actually very clever and, and when he wants something, he knows how to get it. Diesel, and I'm he... waiting to see what it is you want in the studio. <laughs> yes, very there's keenly. something that's quite distracting, I think. <laughs> Dogs, of course, um, are uh, like humans in other ways, aren't they, in terms of their intelligence? There is a comparison that can be made there. Well, I think dogs have evolved to solve different kinds of problems than the problems that humans have evolved to, uh, to solve. But there are very interesting things about dogs, and one of them is that um, there are some diseases that humans get that dogs also naturally acquire. Like dementia, that's what I like mean. Like dementia, and, and that means that if we could measure a dog's cognitive ability it would be perhaps a very useful part of the process of understanding dementia. So we haven't done that research. What we've shown is very promising evidence that we could build a proper, reliable and valid IQ type test. And that would be a terrific tool in the armory of health researchers. How different were the results that you got with your Border Collies? We found that even though, as you say, they're all smart dogs, and I mean, they are just breathtakingly fabulous. Uh, Here they are in a maze now. Being yeah, I mean, they're just. They're doing. And oh, I tell you, the researchers, the people who, our colleagues that worked on this and set up these maze tests, they were fantastic. So, a team of people to say thank you to. But border collies are very smart, but even among one breed, you find quite a lot of variability. And that was interesting to us to yeah, see. Yeah, I wonder, I know from the research, one of the things that is obviously different when you're looking at humans and dogs is that when you study humans, there are all sorts of other factors that come into play. Yes. Whether someone smokes or drinks and the food they eat, you don't have this, obviously. Is there more purity almost in the results you get yeah, with a dog? So last year, there were a couple of um, uh, and we published a paper last year that showed that the relationship in people between intelligence and living longer, it's a very small relationship, but we found that it's mostly genetic. And there's a wonderful group at the University of Edinburgh who study this kind of question, uh, led by Professor Ian Deary up there, and that field is called cognitive epidemiology. And we thought, well, we need a dognitive epidemiology <laughs> because we want to see if you strip out the tendency to smoke, to drink, to kind of dally with recreational drugs and to not go to the gym as you know, as much as you know you should, do you still find this relationship then between being a bit brighter and living longer or having better health? Fascinating, Rosalind. Thank you very much, Sophia. Thanks for bringing Diesel in. Diesel, good boy. Well done. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> Thanks for being with us on GMT. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good boy. Good boy.